I'm sure everyone's already aware what request validation already is, but say for example you have an API method and it takes in some type of payload such as an email or a name or a password to sign up, you want to do some validation right, to make sure that um, you know, the email is valid and you will return an error if the email is not valid, right? So I'm sure you've all guys, you guys have all seen some code similar to this where you have uh, an email and you new it up or you do some validation. So that might look like to you, that might just be like a validate email function or it might, um, and that might just return an error uh, or you might have something a bit more, um, you know, like this, from, which I have, which is more kind of domain driven design, um, things like this without object value types, right? So. It's very simple code. If you get an email straight away, we go and return an error right here. And likewise, if you then have a valid email, you'll then hit the new name code and you'll then hit the new password code, which is not the best experience you could have as a API or as a user, right? Why can't we just validate all of these fields in one go and send back a map of errors or a list of errors, right? So this takes me up to this code here, right? So this is the same method sign up, but just slightly better in my opinion. Um, so I got introduced to this concept from a mate that we're building a little project with at the moment and it's from a package that he wrote called ErrorsX. Um, I've got it locally in this file here. But essentially this concept is a map of errors, right? And it's just got your kind of generic uh, types you might see on some type of map types. So you've got your get, you've got your has, um, set, an error, etc. Um, and also it implements the error interface, right? So as we all know, a map that's not been has not been initialized yet is nil by default. So you can actually do your not equal to nil check that you normally see on errors on this type, right? Um, and then you can store your errors in this map and implements the errors interface, which just very simply formats the map and uh, outputs the string joined by a semicolon here. But obviously, if you guys want to, you know, write your own version of this package or something similar, you can join by what you like or, or do this a slightly different way. And it also implements the Marshall, um, JSON Marshall, Marshall JSON function on the Marshaller interface. So if you want to return this type to your JSON APIs, you'll get that output as well, right? Um, so let's go over this code, some simple code here. So it's the same method. We've got our sign up uh, type. We've got an input struct, which we can use to pass to like repositories and things in the service method. And as you can see, if the email errors, we simply store that error with a key in the errors map, right? So we have a, a nil map here. We're setting email with the email error. We're setting name with the name error and we're setting password with the password error, right? And very simply, if none of these have, um, if we had no errors on the payload, it would just not set any fields and we'll have a, um, a nil errors map, right? Because this set method initializes the map inside of it, right? If it is nil. So we don't have to worry about kind of, you know, initializing this map. We, we have uh, point some, some nilness safety here, right? So we're not going to get any panics. Um, but what we have here is if the errors map is not equal to nil, then since it implements the errors interface anyway, we simply join all of the errors out of that map into a string, right? So as a user that's using this endpoint, or maybe this is a full stack go app that's just returning errors straight to a UI, we're actually getting back the new name error, the new email error, and the new password error in a single string. So uh, as you guys have probably seen, if you, you've ever, I'm assuming some of you guys might have consumed some, some public APIs or some commercial APIs in your projects, um, where you know you, you'll provide it a payload and one field might be invalid and you then provide it the correct value but then another field's invalid right and it would, it would have been so much nicer as a consumer of that api or, or the ui or whatever if it just told you all in one go exactly what's wrong with all of the fields you're sending up and i think this areas map way of doing that is super nice um so that's why i wanted to share it in this video um, so hopefully the concept made sense where you know you have your errors map here uh, you're setting keys on it and you're getting them you're getting them back in a nice output so for example if i just do go run uh command main.go you can see here that it, it's a bad request because i got the generic uh, service error on there but also you can see all of the errors that i've got back right so i've got like the provided passport uh, passport that's meant to say password but the provided password was too short the email was invalid and the name was invalid right and that's all coming uh, just to give you a bit of context of what this is it's all coming from these methods which you saw in the service which i've just hard coded to be um to actually return an error for now and then obviously main is just spinning up the service passing in an input 
and printing out the error, right? So nothing fancy with the error handling here. It's just simply an FMT print line of that error. Uh, but as you see, with the as the maps interface is implementing the error, you get this nice um, string back from all of your maps errors. If that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this is like hopefully it's a new concept to you, and hopefully it helps you um, with any APIs or UIs you might be building. Um, if you have learned something, drop a comment. It's awesome to see when you guys have, have, are new to a concept and, you, and you've learned something. And also a shout out to um, Jake, who is the person, the developer I worked with on some projects who kind of put me onto this concept of error maps. So um, yeah, happy days. Leave a like if the video has helped as always. And also uh, very quickly, thanks for over a thousand subscribers on the channel. This channel has definitely grown up or blown up even a lot more than I thought it would have, um, especially considering I've only had, what, like 11 videos on the channel. So yeah, very cool. And uh, you know, like I say, I appreciate all the feedback you guys have been giving me. And hopefully um, over time, the video quality will just get better and better and I'll upgrade microphones and stuff because I know some people are not a fan of this one. So yeah, I'll, I'll look into improving that. Uh, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully you guys enjoyed and um, see you later on.